Today's project is this heart-shaped box. You can make it with or without the butterfly on the top. And I'm going to show you two different ways to attach the lid to the box. Stay tuned. What's different about it is the inside has a spot for three dowels to go into the bottom and they go into the top three corresponding holes so that you've got a way to keep it in place it's unusual different way of holding things in place than uh, uh you know what I've, i i may i'm the dowels are one good way i could do that with magnets as well take half a dozen or no, take yeah take half a dozen magnets three for the bottom three for the top i mean i may do that yeah, I'll have to think about it. It just dawned on me just, just now. Anyway, I needed some quarter inch material for the top and the bottom. I took a piece of four quarter maple and I resawed it to quarter inch thick. And uh, the butterfly I'm going to paint, so I found a scrap of poplar for that. And Steve has gone for three quarter to one thick for the uh, body. I had a six quarter piece of maple and that is, uh, let's see, what is it? It's inch and, uh, inch and three eighths. Thicker than it needs to be, but really doesn't matter. You can make a box as thick as you want it to be. So let me go over to the uh, drill press. I, well, I'm thinking how I want to do these. I won't drill them yet, but I'll drill a pilot hole here so I can drill out the inside of this, the, uh, the body of the box. I'll start cutting with the part that's going to take a while and that's to cut the middle out of this heart shape that forms the storage compartment of the box. This is inch and three eighths thick maple so due to its hardness and thickness I chose a number 12 Pegasus modified geometry blade. If you're new to scroll sawing and want to learn more about how to choose the right size blade for each project I'll leave a link to my video on that subject on the screen and in the description. It's difficult to make tight turns in thick material with a number 12 blade. I considered using a number 9 blade, but that would lengthen an already very slow process. Instead, I'll use some tricks I've learned over the years to get the job done faster with the larger blade. I cut from the pilot hole into a corner where a sharp turn was needed, too sharp to make with this blade. So I stopped cutting at that point and backed the blade up to the pilot hole. Then I turned the workpiece 180 degrees and backed the delt end of the blade to the place where I had just finished cutting. Sometimes you can back the blade all the way to this point and other times you can't. I'm not sure why. Anyway, this was one of those times when the blade would not go all the way to the corner. That's alright, the technique still works with a slight variation. If the blade won't back all the way into the corner, just move it as far as it will go into the blade's kerf, then start cutting in the new direction from there. This is going to leave a small area that you can go back and clean up later, as I will have to do here. That is done after the inside cut is completed and the waste piece is removed. When I arrived at the next intersection, the turn was not as extreme, so I was able to make it in the normal manner. I cut to the point of the angle, then backed off pressure on the blade so it was no longer cutting. I very carefully used the kerf just created as a space to start turning the workpiece so I could start cutting in the new direction. This takes more skill than performing the same maneuver on thinner, softer stock. I've been doing this long enough to know it can be done, and I knew that it would take just a little more skill and time on this thick piece of maple. I made the turn, then continued cutting along the heart shape. While I'm making the long, slow cut for the heart shape, I can explain the change I decided to make in the plans. As I already mentioned, the plans called for three pieces of quarter-inch dowel rod to be used to hold the top in place. But I had one of those light bulb moments when an alternative method came to mind. I have plenty of ceramic magnets on hand that I use mostly for the personalized name trains to couple the engine to the cars and caboose. Why not use these instead of dowel rods? I measured the magnets and they are half inch in diameter and 3 sixteenths deep. They will fit easily in the base and fit with just a little to spare in the top. So I drilled half inch holes in the base and top for magnets instead of quarter inch holes for dowel rod. 
I used a Forstner bit to carefully make the holes just deep enough that the magnets were flush with the top and box surfaces. I don't know about you, but I have to watch myself when making long cuts. They seem to be moving at the speed of a turtle on Ritalin, and if I'm not careful, I find myself putting extra pressure on the material to try and make the cut move along faster. This is not a good idea. One problem this can create is that the extra pressure will cause the blade to flex, and you'll no longer be getting a cut that's straight up and down and 90 degrees to the table surface. Or this could cause the blade to overheat and start burning the wood, or cause the blade to break. Take your time and let the blade do the work. Scroll sawing is not a task for impatient people. I completed the long cut for the interior, and after loosening the blade, I removed the waist piece. I tried to push it down from the top and out the bottom, but it would only move part of that direction. It pushed out easily from the bottom up out through the top. This tells me I had been putting too much pressure on the blade and it flexed, leaving me with an angled cut. Anytime this happens, you know exactly what you did wrong. I tossed the waste piece, then remounted the saw blade on the inside of the piece so I could go back and clean up all the angled cuts next to those inner circles for the areas that will hold the magnets. I think that cleaning these up with the saw itself is much easier than trying to get into such small spots with a file or sandpaper. The blade was already used when I picked it up again for this project, so that long cut for the inside of the heart took it to the end of its useful life. To determine which end is up and which is down to model scroll saw blade, I take the blade in one hand, then run it across my thumb on the other hand. These are reverse tooth blades, meaning they cut on both the upstroke and downstroke. When you run this little test, the blade will give you much more resistance pulling in one direction than the other. The direction giving the stronger resistance is the end you want facing down because you want most of the cutting to take place on the downstroke. I wanted a fresh blade in the saw to make the outside cut on this heart shape. A dull blade would not only cut more slowly, it would also be prone to overheating and possibly start burning the wood. It could also break. Blade breakage means the blade was improperly tensioned or it was used too long. A fact of life for scroll sawing is that blades will wear out and need to be replaced. That's why they're usually sold in multiples of 12. I started the cut at the bottom point of the heart. I always like to start at a point rather than a curve whenever I can. If you start on a curve, when you come back to that point, it frequently leaves a little bump or rough spot which you then have to sand or otherwise correct. The outside cut is slow going on this thick maple just like the inside cut. But since I know for sure I was pushing too hard on that inside cut, I'll try to be more careful on this. Change blades again, this time to a number three Pegasus modified geometry blade for the quarter inch thick pieces. As I mentioned before, I used a half inch Forstner bit to drill the holes for the magnets. To make them deep, deep enough for the magnets, the point of the Forstner bit just barely broke through on the other side of the top. It was hardly noticeable, so I decided to proceed with cutting the top and bottom. It turns out I was mistaken about the depth they need, needed, but we'll deal with that in just a little bit. These cuts for the top and bottom were pretty easy, just one long cut on each to make the heart shape. The inside point at the top of the heart is easy enough to make in such thin material. The blade can move inside the curve while you swivel the workpiece. I had used a glue stick to attach these small patterns to the wood. I like to use these for small pieces where scroll saw tape would be a nuisance to cut to size and apply. These glue sticks are inexpensive and they are available anywhere you can purchase school supplies. You need to apply enough glue so the pattern doesn't start to peel off while you're cutting, but not too much or the pattern becomes a little difficult to remove. It looks like I was closer to the too much on these, so I'll have to use this sander to remove the parts of the pattern I couldn't quite peel off by hand. I switched to a number three Pegasus modified geometry blade to do those cuts, and I left it in the saw to cut the butterfly for the outside top of the box. As you can see, there are beaucoup inside cuts to make for the butterfly. Now, in case you took French in school and wonder how I could mispronounce the word beaucoup so badly, I'll give you an explanation. I served in the Army in Vietnam from December 1970 until December 1971. I'm not sure why, but the word was pronounced beaucoup. It meant pretty much the same as the French word, much or many. I know my audience is mostly older males, so the chances are good that some watching this are also Vietnam veterans. 
If so, leave a comment as to when you were there and any other details you would like to share. I was there the dates I already mentioned, and I had a 71 Lima MOS, Administrative Specialist. I was assigned to USAVI headquarters, and I was stationed in Saigon, then Long Bin. Cutting the butterfly will require some skill and a lot of patience. This is one of those places where it pays to have a blade holder like the Pegas scroll saw where no tools are required to change the blade or to tighten the blade every time you have to feed it through another pilot hole. A number of these cuts were circles and I briefly considered measuring each and making them with a drill bit, but I thought it would take too long to be worth the effort. I went ahead and drilled pilot holes for each and kept them out on the scroll saw. There are some long shapes with pointed ends and I cut them by going from the pilot hole to the cut line follow the line to one of the points, and then back the blade up to the pilot hole. Then I cut down the line on the other side until the blade reached the first point where I'd stopped cutting. Then I repeated the process on the other half of the shape. I find this easier than trying to maneuver the blade through an impossible angle. The point is more likely to turn out as curved when you do it that way. There was no point in showing me make all these cuts. It took me about 15 minutes to make the cuts on the top half of the butterfly alone. I'll go ahead and complete this off camera, then show you what it looks like when it's done. Yeah, there's the butterfly. That's going to go on the top, but obviously we want something colorful against that maple top. I like the idea I had of using the magnets to hold the top onto here. That's going to be that's going to be a, that's going to be cool. Well, this is a good idea, I think, the magnets, but uh, this quarter inch thick top, I drilled these as deep as I could go, and I thought they were going to be flush with the top, and, and the magnets weren't. And so it wasn't a very good fit here. There's, there's a gap there. Uh, so I tried sanding them down, and these are ceramic magnets, and they kind of broke up, and still didn't have them flat. <laughs> I found out as I was sending these down, I would send them down and I went, I sanded it down a little bit and went to check for uh, flush and they weren't flush, but the things were really, really hot. I got tiny burns on my fingers. So I learned something from that. I'm not quite sure what, but anyway, so that didn't work. So I figured I'm going to have to go to a thicker uh, top. So I went to a three eighths thick top and I was able to get the magnets deep enough in that that, they, uh, that they're flush with the top and they'll go on here nicely. Not quite a... As, and as you can see the magnets hold the top in place there even when you pick the box up you can hold it upside down. In fact you can, they're strong enough you can pick it up by the top. The last step before finishing the box will be to glue the butterfly to the top. I decided to paint it a flat yellow. I think it's called marigold. Because there are all these cutouts, I'm using a glue bottle with a very small tip. I can put little dabs of glue all over, then spread them out with my finger. I'm using a white glue, and it will dry clear so any squeeze out will not show. I like the color of the butterfly, but it doesn't have enough contrast against the off-white color of the maple box. I think that the next time I make one of these, I'll use a darker color wood for the box to help the butterfly stand out better. Of course, I can also make the box without the butterfly altogether. Projects like these have a huge variety of variations possible, limited only by your imagination. I carefully lined up the butterfly by eye against the heart-shaped top so I could set it in place with a minimum of movement. That will avoid smearing glue onto spots where it isn't needed, allowing the polyurethane finish to land on the top in between all those cutouts on the butterfly. I left some spring clamps on my workbench from my last project because I knew I'd be needing them soon for this. The top plus the butterfly is only 5 eighths of an inch thick, and the spring clamps are perfect for a project like this. They're quick and easy to apply, and due to their size, I can spread several of them around the top. I doubt if I could have gotten more than four F clamps onto that same space. I'll set this aside to dry, then I'll apply a couple coats of warm satin spray polyurethane. Here's the butterfly topped heart shaped box after the polyurethane finish has been applied. I like the way the magnets hold the top in place, but it can also be easily removed. The magnets are strong enough that they'll even hold while you pick up the box by the top. I'd love to read your comments on this project. 
If you don't have magnets on hand like I do, do you still plan to make the box using dowels to secure the top as shown on the original plans? Will you make it with or without the butterfly? What wood will you use for the box? As always, please leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell and you'll know when I release my next video. In the meantime, there will be a suggested video to watch next. There are buku videos already recorded and ready.